Do you ever find yourself just remembering the past and reminiscing those happy memories of your childhood? You know, those carefree days when you didn't have a lot to worry about and life just kind of was easy. So many of my best childhood memories come from the times that I spent with my grandma, my dad's mom. I remember we would spend so much time just sitting on a bench at the porch and she would tell me and retell me the same jokes or the same stories again and again. And I longed to hear them again and again. I would ask grandma, please tell me more about the story of the little aunt and how she found a golden coin and how she spent that money and about all these different insects who would try to flirt with the ant. And <laughs> my grandma just had some pretty wild and crazy stories that I love to listen to. And she also had some pretty corny jokes that I thought were hilarious. I remember that she had a garden full of fruit and vegetables and that we would work together in there and we would pick stuff and, and then cook it. I remember sitting at the dinner table and not being in a rush, just eating calmly, enjoying everybody's presence, everybody's company, and just really taking the evening and saying, okay, this is the end of the day and just unwinding. My grandma always had time for her family and her friends. I don't remember her ever fretting over work, even though she was a business owner and it was a successful business. I don't remember her fussing about the house, but it was always in order. My grandma somehow found a way to balance work life and family and truly enjoy her life. I want to think about that today. I want to think about ways that we can enjoy life. Life is busy. Life is hectic and especially now, but I want to take it back a step. I want to take a breather and think about all the ways that we can take this life that we live, this one life, this one opportunity and really enjoy it. Hey, I am Michelle Hayes, special education teacher and parent of a child with multiple special needs. I'm here to share stories, strategies, inspiration, and hope to parents and caregivers of individuals with disabilities. Because when life requires us not to be normal, it becomes our opportunity to turn into something extraordinary. Welcome to the journey. been dreading making this podcast episode and I have been postponing it for so long because of the topic. Um, I don't feel like an expert in this topic. I feel like I am the number one stressor. I feel like I am a warrior. I feel like I'm a busy bee and I don't have a lot to tell you about enjoying life, but I really want to. <laughs> Um, it's not that I don't like the life that I lead. I love my family. I love what I do. I love my, you know, I love my my children and my husband, my job. It's just that I, I overstress. I overwork, and I, I never feel like I'm doing enough. I always feel like, hey, well, I got this far. If I push myself this far, I can keep going. And I know that's what I've been talking about all this time. But it it's um, it also interferes with with my ability to enjoy life. This being constantly busy, never taking a moment to reflect, to pause, or even to enjoy my work. The things that I've done, just to sit back and look and say, this is what I've accomplished so far. So there's that. And I've also been postponing recording because... I just started school. I'm a teacher and this is the weirdest school year in the history of school, I think. Anyway, I'm pretty sure there's been some weird years, but this one, 2020, it's it's really out there. Um we we started teaching virtually and I'm not going to lie. I am loving virtual teaching because my other career was television and radio and film. So communicating digitally, communicating in um, mass media type of way is really a strength for me. But it does feel like the first year of teaching. And I also work with a team who is not comfortable 
doing this kind of teaching. Also, there's a lot of uncertainty. How long are we doing this for? Is it one week? Is it two weeks? Uh, right now, we're in the middle of a COVID pandemic, and they keep expanding and, ex and stretching out those dates. And anyway, it's really interfering with my free time. And so I've been postponing recording this podcast for that reason. You're going to listen to a lot of mistakes probably because I'm not going to take the time to edit them out. The other podcasts I have and this one, I'm just probably going to upload it. Um, and there is a third reason why I am not recording this podcast. I ordered a microphone because my microphone is terrible. I am aware of the his. I'm aware that it's making this terrible noise. But guys, if I don't record this podcast, it's not going to come out on time. And I promised everyone I would record a weekly podcast for season one. And now I'm kind of bound by my word because that's the sort of person that I am. I know it's my podcast. And I know there's no rule that says I have to put it out there, but I just feel accountable. Anyway, if anyone is out there right now listening, <laughs> those are the reasons that I have been dreading recording this podcast, but I have a moment of silence and I have a glass of wine and I am going to go ahead and chat to you. All right, so let's go back and talk about enjoying life. I think about my grandma. I was trying to think about people that have really influenced me as far as people that I think of, that they really took their life and enjoyed and savored it. And my grandma was the first person that came to my mind. She really did seem like someone who was genuinely content. I'm not talking about someone who faked joy or anything like that. She just seemed content. She never was in a rush. She never seemed cranky. In fact, I don't remember my grandma ever being angry. And she just spent time with people that she loved. And I think when it comes down to it, that that is one of the things that makes life meaningful. Spending time with the people you love. I spend so much time just being busy preparing for the people that I love that I'm afraid that I don't spend time with the people that I love. Does that make sense? But my grandma always had time. And now that I'm grown, now that, now that I'm grown with a special needs child who is in high school, I wish that I had my grandma still around so that I could ask her questions. I would love to know how she managed to do it all. You know, she owned a business. She was a widow and she still found time to keep her business running and her family together. And she would truly slow down and enjoy her life. I remember she would frequently go out with her brothers and sisters to have coffee and cake and just enjoy their time together. My grandma found a way to balance all of that. But all I have left are the memories and hopefully some of her genes. Now, I'm going to go a little off script, which is really weird. Guys, I am actually recording a podcast trying to find what they call my voice. And even though I've recorded, a, oh my gosh, gazillions of YouTube videos, this is totally weird for me. Talking into a microphone and not, you know, being able to just edit video and add sound effects and whatever it is that I do when I make video. Um, up till now... I've been strictly following a script and I was listening to my own podcast and quite frankly, I don't think that I've quite found my voice yet. I feel like it's too rigid and I'm a more laid back, relaxed kind of person. And you guys, if you're here, I mean, just sit back and enjoy the show. I will figure out my own tone and my own style as I go. And so today I am going to go a lot of, of script. I don't have a total script that I've written like I had before. And I'm just going to read off my bullet points about my thoughts on happiness and enjoying life. And maybe I can expand on it. We'll see. All right. So here's something interesting. There's a research on happiness that shows that the people who live in the present moment are the happiest people around. So there was a study done, and I was actually a part of it. Um, 
it was this, um, it was like an app I downloaded on my phone and randomly it would ask you a question. What are you doing and how do you feel? And so you would post what you were doing and ha- that happiness that you were feeling. And then, and then it said, are you thinking about something else? I think it was something like that. Anyway, it was discovered that the people who were it, present and engaged in the moment that they were experiencing were the people that were truly happy, even if it was a mundane task. And I'm going to say washing dishes because that's what I do all the time and that I'm really sick of. (laughs) Even if it was a mundane task, the people that were actually present in that moment were enjoying that moment more. And that's interesting because I feel like Frequently, I'm just trying to fast forward to the next thing. I'm, I'm in the, I'm in this moment and I'm spending time in this moment, but I'm constantly thinking about, okay, I got to get through with that so I can get on to the next thing. And Jerry Seinfeld jokes about that. If you've heard some of his more recent comedies, or maybe he wrote about it before. I went to his show recently and I was just lucky enough to, before, before COVID shut the world down, um, I was able to go to his, his stand up comedy and um, sit in the nosebleed section and listen to his comedy and the point of my rambling is he was joking about okay everybody wants to go out they say let's go out and here you are you are out and while you're out you're thinking oh I can't wait to go home and then you get home and you're like okay I gotta get ready for work so basically he's like nobody wants to be where they're at and he said it really hilarious and I'm saying it really stupid but the point is that We are constantly thinking about what's next. And I know for sure I am trying to be in the future, trying to be in the future. And we never live in the present and we're never enjoying the moment that we actually have and we hold in our hands. And that's something important. I think that's something to be thought about to live in the present. I know that, um, my daughter is going into high school. In fact, she's actually going to start high school in person because we've been doing virtually. She's going to go in person in just two days. And it's going to be her special education classroom. And I've always dreaded the thought of my daughter going into a specialized classroom in high school because, I don't know if you've had that thought, it's just not the way I envisioned having a high schooler. I thought about, you know, a uh, pom-poms and cheerleading uniforms and I don't know maybe theater plays and things like that but it's turned out different for us and that's that's not been easy to accept for me it's been difficult to accept it's been a daily battle and daily struggle but I feel like accepting and embracing your new situation can really help you stay in the moment and embrace the moment that you have. I mean, how scary could it be that that moment will pass and one day you won't have it? And then you'll think about, oh, I wish I could have, I wish I could have enjoyed the good old days when they were the good old days. You've got to see the beauty that is around you. I was just talking to someone on Facebook, a friend of mine, um, who is also a special needs parent. um, And she has a child who is much, much younger than mine. So her child is in preschool and mine is in high school. And I was telling her how it's different. She was talking about how raising a special needs child is different because they don't do the things that you expect them to do at their age. But then we got to talking about Yeah, but my child is not going to slam a door in my face and tell me she hates me. I'm never going to have to worry about her running away because she's resentful of of me. And I'm never going to have to worry about some creepy boyfriend trying to harm her. Those are things that I can think about, that I can be happy about. There are so many parents of teenagers who are not developmentally challenged, who have other fears that they have to face that... I don't. And I need to see the beauty in in that. That, yeah, maybe we don't have what I thought, but there's also a silver lining. There's also something beautiful in that. It's also super important that you love the ones you're with. I've been married for 20 years and I I don't want to throw any judgment. I I just, I, I understand that divorce happens and I understand that it is devastating and hurtful and hard. But, um... Some of the people that I've watched get divorces, I I think, I think about, you know, they could have tried to work it out. 
You could have loved the one you're with. You could have embraced the person that you're with. You could have teamed up and paired up. Yes, your spouse is not maybe perfect. You know what? You're not either. And your spouse is going to have flaws. And some of them are going to seem like deal breaker flaws. But, you know, you you sh- you really, I want to recommend that you really embrace each other and that you embrace the people that you got. It's not easy to have a close relationship. It's not supposed to be. There's going to be friction, but there's also some beautiful things that could come, that could come out of that. And I think that throwing in the towel too soon is not going to bring happiness to your life. I think working hard and making an effort to make things work with the people that you're with. I think that is for most of the time, a a thing that you can be proud of. So if you find yourself having friction with those people that you have, whether it be a spouse or a mom or a sister, that the, those, you know, nuclear people in your life, we're in a society and in a time where we are um, promoting cutting off toxic people from your life. And although I understand removing abuse from, from yourself, removing damage from yourself, I think it's important that we don't look at each other as something that is disposable. We need to embrace each other. We need to hold each other. We need to say we are here together for better or for worse. I really think that embracing the ones that you're with and not being jealous of somebody else's relationships can help you really find happiness. I'm a creative person and I find joy in expressing myself creatively. I feel like everyone needs a way to find Uh, a way to express themselves in a productive way. (laughs) Don't be destructive. Um, There are ways to express yourself that are destructive. I'm not talking about those. But find a way to express your feelings in a way that you feel like you have said what is in your heart. I personally like to write in journals. And it's really cool because then you can look back at what you wrote and you can be like, oh man, that was really stupid. Or wow, I really had a thought there. I like journals personally, but um, I also like drawing. Uh, Some people like to express themselves through songs and some people just like to talk over coffee with a friend. Find a way to just speak. Let yourself speak. Hear yourself speak. What I'm trying to say is, Find a way to express yourself productively. And that's going to take a load off. When you're stuck in a rut, why don't you change up the scenery? Um, I know sometimes I get stuck in a rut because I get so obsessed about completing tasks. And I'm like, oh, and it's like my wheels are stuck in the mud. And I just keep like driving it deeper and deeper and I go I I get nowhere I get nowhere but exhausted and then I can't let go I'm like no I gotta finish this I've got to do this I've got to see it to the completion because just that's the way I am I'm a finisher um but sometimes that's a problem because I can get real stuck in a rut and I will get obsessed and I won't let go (laughs) so it's important to change up the scenery if you can't change up the scenery um for me I really recommend put some music on It is amazing what a mood changer music can be, and I don't use it nearly enough. I don't know why, Um, but do what you can to change the scenery. Just drop what you're doing, go for a walk, drop what you're doing, go to the bathroom and lock the door, or do something. Change up your scenery in whatever way that you can when you are stuck in a rut. I've also thought that you should create more time for fun. Um... Take time for yourself. I mean, when was the last time you actually watched a TV show for yourself? Or when was the last time you ate something that you craved that you actually were looking forward to? Or when was the last time you spent time with a friend? Do what you can to spend time on yourself. I know it's hard. It's hard for me anyway. But try It's a priority. It's important enough. You are a priority because if you don't change your mood, you would change the mood of everyone in the house to match yours. You're the thermostat of your house. 
and whatever you set your thermostat to, that's what you're going to let everyone else feel. So make time for fun. Enjoy life. Do what you can so that you can embrace what you've got. I also think that it's important to simplify. Automate tasks whenever possible. Me, for example, I discovered that I can get on my grocery store online, create a shopping list, and it saves it. So then I created this master shopping list of the things that I always buy. And whenever the week comes around and it's time to reorder food, I just open my list. I check off the things that I need and I submit. I pick up my groceries from uh, the curbside, it's called, and that simplifies my task. I have a automatic uh, vacuum machine that's like a robot. It's like a Roomba, but it's another brand. And I set it to vacuum while I'm gone, while I leave the house. Um, as much as you can, try to automate your tasks. Check out your email. That sets your filters so that it sorts your mail into the places where it should go. Think about all the ways that you can automate and make things more um Take advantage of the technology that you have. Make them more automatic as much as you can. Life is already complicated. So try to cut out all those unnecessary extra things. Another thing I want to recommend for simplifying is creating repetitive, predictable routines. Now the artist in me, the theatrical person in me really, really, really fights this, but it's for my benefit. It is for my blessing. It's like, I don't know, I guess it's like taking fiber. It's not the best thing, but man, it keeps you regular. Um, so I create repetitive, predictable routines. So when it comes to lunch planning, now I'm repeating meals a lot, things that we love. Um, I create the same kind of routine for the evening and the morning, things that are predictable because then I don't have to stop and think about what I'm doing. I just start moving automatically and it doesn't take up that energy for my brain that I really need to spend in other places. Take time to slow down. And it's really, really hard for me to tell you this because I don't do it. I don't slow down. I'm supposed to be unwinding and instead I'm making a podcast. <laughs> um, but I want to learn. It's very, very important. I want you to question when you're doing something, if you're like me and you think that you've got to have all these things done and all these things completed, stop and ask yourself, is it really, really, really important? Like, What's going to happen if it doesn't get done? Or is there a way to make this more simple? For me in the kitchen, I just have such a hard time creating simple meals. Like I want to be all chef. I want to be a full-blown chef in the kitchen and I want to create the most fancy dishes. But why can't I just warm up a burrito? I would save an hour <laughs> and I would be done and I would have one dish to wash. Ask yourself, what would this look like if it was just simple? What would it look like if I cut out all the extra junk? Can I make this more simple? So think about those things as you're trying to simplify. And I also want to recommend that you spend your time creating systems for organization rather than just staying busy. So yeah, you can wash dishes one at a time as they come in, for example. I keep obsessing with the kitchen, you guys, because I don't know if you've picked up by now or not. I am a kitchen slave. I am in the kitchen all the time. Later, maybe I will explain, but Katie has a metabolic disorder and I'm always cooking. <laughs> so you're going to hear a lot of kitchen examples. Sorry. It's the first ones that come to mind. And like I told you, I'm going off script, so I'm kind of rambling right now. But anyway, if you could spend time on your time, spend it on systems, creating systems and not just pointless busyness. So dishes come in and I'm washing it one at a time, one at a time, and, and things are happening like that. And it's just keeping me busy all the time in the same spot. But now if I spend time creating systems, like if I organize my drawers so that everything was easy to put away, so that the things that I need are accessible quickly, so that maybe I can create a spot where if I'm going to, if I already know I'm making lunch boxes, I have everything ready to go in the same spot. Spending time creating systems like that 
it's going to be much more productive and much more effective in the long run than running around being busy. So as much as you can, try to think about ways that you can create systems around your life that can simplify your process in the long run. Another tip I want to give you is one that I don't take. (laughs) It's delegate, right? You've heard the saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, but teach a man to fish and you feed him for life. Now, it's important that you teach those people who you're with, your support system, how to help you. Have I done it? No. Have I heard that it's important? Yes. Am I going to think about it? Yes. Am I going to try? Yes. <laughs> the control freak in me has a real hard time letting go of this. But if I can just delegate and let go of that control and let people help me the way that they can help me. I've heard this said by another person before. 80% done by someone else is still better than 100% done by you. So if somebody else can help you 80% of the way and you do the last 20 Hey, that is a lot of help, isn't it? So try to delegate as much as you can, even though your podcast speaker is still working on it. (laughs) What about turning down the loud? There's so much loudness going on around you. Like I wake up and I wake up because my phone alarm goes off. So there it goes and it starts ringing and all of a sudden I see notifications on my phone and I start checking notifications and before you know it, I'm busy doing nothing. I start checking my email, I start checking my Facebook and all my social media accounts and and there I am with the very first part of the day, just spending time with pointless noise. Try to turn off the loudness, try to find ways to not always have input, input, input coming in at your life. Does your email come in all the time and just pour out like mine does? I'm a teacher. I get, I don't know, 500 emails a day, especially now that we've gone to virtual teaching. But there's a way to simplify your email inbox. You can create filters. You can set your inbox to receive from certain senders and put them in specific folders and organize your content in a certain way. That's one way to turn down that noise. What about your mindless phone time? Do you constantly grab your phone and are trying to tune out and not live in the moment, not be in the moment? Just are you at a red light and you grab your phone? Hey, not judging. I do. But you know what this does? It creates all this noise. It creates all this loudness in your mind. It doesn't give your mind time or opportunity to decompress, to be creative, to just be still. (laughs) beware of that mindless phone time that you're spending. So when I was talking about these studies, talking about happiness, they were mentioning that happiness is found in fulfillment. And fulfillment uh, could be summed up in four major categories. And these people that reported being happy, the happier people were reporting that they felt like they had a purpose in life. A lot of times that was through, through their job. They felt like they were connecting with others, so they were making meaningful relationships. They felt like they had a relationship with God and some kind of spiritual life. And they also felt like they were leaving something behind. So here's something for you and me to think about. Are you feeling fulfillment in your life? Have you found spirituality in your life or a higher calling? Do you feel like you have a purpose in your life? What are you doing with it? Are you connecting with people? Are you doing something to leave a legacy? These are questions that I think we need to get to because we only really do. I know it's cliche, but we really only do have one life to lead and it is this one. And it's important that we feel satisfaction with the way that we are living life. And I think it's important to enjoy it because time is not replaceable. If you've lost a loved one, you know what I mean. You don't get time back. You get the time that you have right now. And it's important to stop and think, are you making the most of it? Are you enjoying your life? You know, it's not all work, 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 sacrifice, sacrifice. Stop. Slow down. Enjoy your life. Your life is your story. Write it well and edit it often. You've been listening to episode seven of The Journey, where we've been talking all about enjoying your life. 
We've discussed how living in the moment can make you feel happier. We've also talked about loving the ones that you have and the ones that you are with. We discussed about ways that you can create more time for fun by simplifying, delegating, and turning down all that extra noise. Join me next week for the final episode of this season where we will explore all the ways that you can take care of yourself. To learn more about us, or visit the podcast archives, or even for more information on how to subscribe to this podcast, visit my website, www.heymrshayes.com. That's www.heymrshayes.com. Until next time, enjoy the journey.